so with me returning to Albion Online, majority of the content that I've been doing is Crystal Arenas. So here's a quick beginner's guide on the Crystal Arena, everything from how to sign up and what to bring and the rewards. So the Crystal Arena is a new 5v5 PvP feature where you go for objective and kills. It has its own ranking system and rewards just like the Crystal League. But in the Crystal Arena, you do not lose your gear, unlike the Crystal League. The requirements to enter the Crystal Arena is an equipment set with 900 item power or more. The way you sign up to the Crystal Arena is by clicking the Activities tab, selecting the Arena, and then selecting Crystal Arena. With this, a new menu will pop up and you can select if you want to enter the Crystal Arena as a fighter or a healer. You may select both roles when you sign up but make sure you have healing equipment in your inventory and you don't troll as a DPS healer. I believe that SBI have announced that you could get banned if you troll heal arenas. You may sign up in the crystal arena in the party size of one, two, three, or five. Guess they hate the number four for some reason. Now I normally solo queue, but if you want to climb the ranks of the crystal arena, it is recommended that you go with a group of a five man pre-made group and you are in comms such as discord. If you do sign up with a five-man team, the system will try to pay you with another five-man pre-made team. So I normally like to go in a solo because I don't have a team and it's generally faster. So now that you know how to enter, what should you bring? Well, I normally play a fighter role. So what I like to bring is one melee main weapon with two swaps and one main ranged weapon with two swaps. So here is an example. I like the Great Axe as my main melee weapon and I bring in Bear Paws and Blood Litter as my swaps. Great text has good AoE and the blood letter has good execute potential, while the bear pause is somewhere in between. So you've covered quite a range. As for the range weapons, I like to bring a normal bow or a spring bow, bolt casters or light crossbow, and either a fire staff or a frost staff. This gives you a good selection of options to change to after you have spawned in and checked what your teammates are running. As for the armor swaps, I normally like to bring a merc jacket, hunter jacket, specter hood, cultist cow, and cleric robe as well as the offhand for the blood letter and light crossbow. I go with the Musek since it gives more damage. If you're feeling really adventurous, go for the Crypt Candle. We're going to be using the Scholar Cow, Hellion Jacket and any leather shoes and a Thetford Cape. You can bring food swaps, but I like to just use tier seven pork omelets since the cooldown works with most builds. Also, don't forget to bring lots of tier four poisons or if you want to survive more, then bring healing potions or resistance potions. I don't know if they have changed the sticky potions, but from when I left, they were pretty useless. As for a mount, bring the fastest mount with the lowest cooldown. I normally bring a Grey Wolf since it's fairly cheap and does the job that it needs to do. Next up, the Crystal Arena rules. Crystal Arena seasons begin with each guild season. All players start at rank Iron 1 with 0 points, and as you win games, you get points, and when you lose games, you will lose some points. When the match starts, each team starts in a respective corner with 150 points in their team. You have 25 minutes to reduce your opponent's points to zero. The way you reduce points is by killing the enemy which minuses 6 points or controlling a pillar for 60 seconds. The more pillars you hold, the more points get reduced every 60 seconds. Each pillar is 10 points. Now why should you even do the Crystal Arena? Well it's pretty fun, but you can also get fame, silver, arena sigils and tokens. And every time you rank up, you get a one time reward with every rank so it motivates you to keep killing, controlling and ranking up. So now that you know how to sign up and what to bring and the rules, what do you do? Well, when you enter the arena, the first thing you should do is use the scoreboard to see what your teammates and your opponents are wearing. This gives you a good idea on what equipment you should swap to if needed to counter the enemy or balance the team. You will learn what to swap to with experience, but here's a quick example. If you have four ranged damage dealers wearing cloth and they have two melee engaged characters, your team will likely get zoned and pushed back. So what you should do is switch to a melee equipment set and switch your role from ranged DPS to brawler. Your job is to keep on top of the healer and go back to your healer when you need heals. This also works vice versa. If you have a team of 4 melee DPS, it's a good idea to switch to a ranged cloth DPS. Don't get me wrong, some builds have 4 melee DPS that work. However, since you're normally going to be solo queuing, I don't think the coordination is going to be there. Next, since I normally have the fastest mount on my team, I like to go to the first pillar and capture it. Then join the party in the fight up top when I've confirmed that the opponent team isn't going to rush our pillar to capture. However, if I'm going to be a ranged DPS, I like to go to the enemy's pillar and capture it. I will use my insane sustain bow build which gives you the option to survive against two people. This is good in two ways. 
One, you can capture the base for free, or you can keep one or two opponents engaged long enough for your team to wipe the other three. After the team fight starts, it's a good idea to keep checking on your pillars, since after a few people die, when they spawn, they will normally like to go and take over any captured pillars. So what I like to do is, when your team has killed the first enemy, continue fighting for around 20 seconds, then mount up and go to your respective captured pillar. This way, you can intercept the enemy that's just spawned, and on the way, you should switch to a good 1v1 build. This way, you're more likely to win the fight and protect your pillar or recapture it if it's already been captured. This all depends on your playstyle and what you enjoy doing. You don't have to do all these things, but it's a good idea to keep in mind what your opponent is thinking. Also having good map awareness. If you've played League of Legends a lot, then you have a habit of checking the map every 30 seconds. You should try and do this in Albion Online Crystal Arenas also. This makes it so you don't get caught up in the team fights and forget to capture the pillar objectives. I have been in games where people just constantly team fight without capturing even when they've cleared the enemies from the pillar point. So what are you waiting for? Get out there and enjoy the Crystal Arenas. You should have learned all that you need to know on how to sign up, what to do, what to bring and the rewards. Now it all depends on you and what you want to do and play. Just play casually and enjoying it for the PvP or go sweaty triad and claim the top ranks for the bragging rights. Also, if you're interested in learning about the future of gaming and how in the next 2-5 to five years the gaming industry will go through a massive change, then check out these videos here. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button as well as that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell to know whenever I post a new album online or Web3 NFT Metaverse crypto gaming video. Thank you guys for watching and as always, see you next video.